Hello and welcome to our YouTube channel. In this video, we'll be covering the aortic dissection. It's a very simple yet confusing topic. Again, like our previous videos, we'll divide the video into two parts. In the first part of our video, we'll look at the basics and the pathogenesis of the disease. While in the second part of our video, we'll cover the clinical findings which are associated with the aortic dissection. So let's take on the first part. As we all know, the blood vessels consist of three different layers which are the tunica intima, the tunica media and the tunica externa if we start from the inside to the outside. In the case of aortic dissection, a tear is formed in the tunica intima of the aorta and the high blood pressure forces the blood through this tear into the wall of the aorta and it starts flowing between the tunica intima and the tunica media thus creating a false lumen. This is called as false lumen because the true lumen is within the blood vessel itself. Now let's look at the causes of the aortic dissection. So in order for the aortic dissection to occur, the two conditions must be fulfilled. The first is that there must be a high pressure in the region. Since this condition is fulfilled only in the proximal 10 cm of the aorta, as the aortic dissection takes place in the proximal 10 cm of the aorta only. The second condition is that there should be a pre-existing weakening of the wall of the aorta. This weakening is found in the certain conditions like the Marfan syndrome which is a connective tissue disorder. It's also found in the cases when the blood flow through the vasa vasorum decreases like in case of certain vasculitis. This weakening when added with the high pressure in the region leads to the aortic dissection. Now there may be many other problems in this condition. For example, the blood flow in the false lumen can flow over the surface of the heart causing the cardiac tamponade which is really a dangerous situation and can be fatal. There may also be the hemorrhage in which the blood flows out of the aorta into the mediastinum this is also a dangerous condition. There may also be a condition in which the blood continues to flow through the false lumen and reaches a point where an another artery branches off the aorta and in this way it may cause the compression of another artery. For example, the renal artery or the subclavian artery. This causes the ischemia of the organs which are supplied by those arteries leading to a new group of problems. Now let's look at the second part of our video that is the symptoms. The main symptom which is associated with the aortic dissection is the sharp chest pain which radiates to the back. There may also be the development of the weak pulses in the downstream arteries like the brachial artery or sometime there may be a difference in the blood pressure in the two arms. So if there is a rupture then massive hypotension and even the shock may develop which can also be a potential problem of the disease. Now let's look at the diagnosis. On a chest x-ray there is a widening of the mediastinum. Similarly we can diagnose it with various other modalities like the CT angiogram or the magnetic resonance angiography. The treatment involves the surgical intervention and the use of antihypertensive to decrease the blood pressure to the extent that it is not dangerous. So this is all about the aortic dissection. For more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel.